and we're live. Hi guys, thank you very much for joining again to another new episode of 2021, the podcast Who Is. Today we are with a special guest. I think you know him, it's Nuno, but you don't know anything about him till now. Today we will discuss about his um, beginnings in Taekwondo Schule Basel, how it happens, how was his motivation, how was the effort and the obstacles and everything you can also apply to your success story and to your also entrepreneurship. Stay tuned and welcome at JFP TV. Mm. Right away, thank you very much for joining us again, Nuno. My it's pleasure. a pleasure. My Every pleasure. Friday is Nuno Day. How are you? Very good, thank you. Fine. And you? Thank you also. You you look much younger with a new haircut and I look just older, whatever I do with my hair. What ha <laughs> how happened that? How does it happen? I have no official answer to this question. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe but, I... but thank you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it doesn't have to do anything with hair. Well, <laughs> whoever knows, whoever knows. <laughs> So this topic or this podcast type, we were like uh, waiting for a long time because actually we wanted to start right away last year. But I think we had to bring some input, some insights to our uh, followers, our listeners, our subscribers. And I think they got a lot of motivation from us. They got a lot of wisdom and all, a lot of um, life experience from you. And I think now is the time before the January first month ends to discover about you, more about you. We heard about you as a warrior, as a fighter, as an athlete. But now the business side, the businessman. Mm -hmm. First question, tell us about the Taekwondo Schule Basel and the beginnings. Mm -hmm. Yes, this was an adventure and it is still an adventure. So everything starts uh, to be exact 1992. And uh, in a very funny way, I was working in a martial art shop selling mar martial art items. And we got a phone call from a, a lady. Um, her name was Frau Bossart. I call her the mother of my school. And she was from America. She had trained Taekwondo in America and was looking for a Taekwondo school in Basel. At that time, uh, there was no Taekwondo in Basel. And she asked me for a school. She was very motivated to train. I, I said to her, look, I'm a Taekwondo teacher. It's funny that we could speak together. But there is no Taekwondo school in Basel. And so you were one of the first ones. Yeah. Or you were the first one. No, not the first. Yeah. Uh, the second. And then she said to me, yes, but you don't want to open a school. I said, look, we do like this. If you find a room... I open a school, <laughs> like, like we talk now, 100% yeah. spontaneous. Yeah. And she said, OK. Next day, she called me <laughs> and she said, I, I have a, a room. Then I said, you have a school. <laughs> <laughs> so you are very spontaneous, but also determined. That's that's the or, whole or, story. Or crazy. Or crazy. <laughs> so um, I remember good with, with my father. We did some flyer, uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, on the photocopiers. Yeah. Uh, with the computer, I remember exactly. I print fifty R uh, three. Uh, yeah. I went in the city. I put them somewhere. And the uh, first training, there were twelve twelve people there. Unbelievable. I mean, imagine imagine the time. It's Today not, you had to uh, do Google Ads and everything, and it's not guaranteed not to really twelve people. Paper on the wall. So cool. Some strategic points yeah and learn to fight uh, and, uh, <laughs> and the first the first uh, training 12 people came mm -hmm. the majority of them already practiced martial arts even in, at a good level they, they, it was a little bit they want to try the new kid in town ah no? yeah yeah you it, told it, me about it, that it, it, was, one it, point. it was very funny yeah and six months later we already had uh, 50 students Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I ask you, uh, with, with how many uh, um, students could you have like the break even? Did you also do like a business plan or what did you just do? Ah, I will do it. How was that mindset you had then? So I was um, renting a Tunhalle, mm -hmm. which was very, very, very uh, low price. Ah, yeah, of course. So yeah. the risk was, uh, it uh, and doing it uh, half time, uh, it was possible to do it beside my job. So I had yeah. a 
70% job. So this was my uh, income. Mm -hmm. So I was I had no business idea. It was it was nice to have some side income, yeah. but it was passion. Yeah. It was passion, and uh, the break even was very easy to achieve. Good, uh, yeah, it was very easy to achieve. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At a certain point, you started to uh, invest more time in it, and uh, when when was the time when you just did that? I mean, you were like seventy uh, percent there, and from which point on you decided to mm -hmm. cancel your mm -hmm. job, your mm -hmm. new normal job, and invest your full mm -hmm. time to the school? So I have to say because you no, know, sometimes um, people see the um, the end result mm -hmm. and uh, don't really realize the the way. During 10 years, I had um, at, at the end I had a full time job. As I told you at, at Puma in the marketing, um, also sponsoring for athletes, for yeah. teams, uh, marketing for fitness, and this was a mo more than a full time job. It was like a, really a lot. And during that time, I did 10 years, three times a week, Basel Bill. Mm -hmm. I was living in Bill. After the job, I took the car, I came to Basel, I teach, I came home midnight, next day, 7.30 in the office, all day working. So I did that during 10, 10, 10 years. Wow. And yeah. at that time, the school was also very successful, but it was like limited because mm -hmm. the, the time I invest into it uh, was also limited. Yeah. But it, uh, it was working on the maximum for the entire, yeah, the time yeah. I was investing. So to answer your question, um, I realized that um, I was not at the right place in, in, in the job I was doing. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot there, but it was not... Um, fulfilling. Fulfilling. Yeah. And um, I knew Taekwondo is what I love, is what I do the best, is what I can share, I can give a lot, I can develop myself. I can do every day what I love to do, so be very uh, motivated all the time. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, let's do it full risk. And uh, I jumped into the cold water and uh, I said, okay, keep, quit my job and uh, we go only for Taekwondo. Yeah. Yeah. Was, was the motivation for that there because you had the experience that yeah. you were progressing, you had more and more students, uh, it was also not like time and energy consuming because a life uh, as a second like a side hustle like a second job can maybe be just very very energy consuming even yeah. if it brings a little bit more money and uh, so was there was there the competition in between your side job and your main job because of the difference of fulfillment of of, of joy probably a little bit probably and it was simply too much and uh, I mean, you, you can't have two focus at the same time, no? Yeah. And this was a little bit frustrating, but the main point, the main point was meaning. Mm -hmm. I want to give some meaning in, to my life and do something which I really can invest from my heart. Yeah. So from the um, commercial point of view, it was never a, an interesting and a good choice. Yeah. Just never. Uh, and it was also not my goal. Uh, the goal was to do what makes me happy and to share it with people and to give uh, meaning to, to, yeah. to this. Yeah. How much, and this, this question we didn't actually prepare, but that's, so, that's coming in my mind, how much did also uh, your holistic view um, put some um, insight in that? I mean, as a fighter, you could even survive a bad job, I think, because you are like fighting. Mm. You know, you you can you can surpass your wishes and hopes. But the more you got, I think, in yoga and like the spiritual um, type of of the martial arts, that the spiritual mm. side of the martial arts, is that also there where you wanted to look for fulfillment? Because when I when I um, when I'm talking with young athletes, they want to have athletic. Uh, jobs or, or mm. a fulfillment like they want to like mm -hmm. push and show you themselves and the more the older i get also uh, i realize you're searching more for fulfillment but for me it's coming from a side which i also i'm reading more i'm a little bit more open-minded for for a lot of things which i was not when i was 25 mm -hmm. so 
how 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 did that come that you changed your your viewpoints or what was for you your priorities how did that come or can you explain yourself that so w when i started the, the school i was 27 years old mm -hmm. and i was a pure fighter it was martial arts uh, the training could not be hard enough <laughs> and ev everybody had to die during the training <laughs> and uh, i was really um dictator teacher yeah. like a little bit army style yeah uh, some old students they told me now we remember you it was a little bit uh, a little bit ashamed today but <laughs> i was young okay yeah. so at that time i had not this um view on the martial arts um combining soft skills like yeah. uh, meditation yoga tai chi qigong breathing meditation with martial arts no it, it was pure taekwondo but the interest for the educational point of view was always there. Mm -hmm. For me, it was a, a training method, a fighting method, but also a self-educational method. Mm -hmm. And this was always the core from our teaching. Even when I form um, successful athletes for competition, yeah. it was always cl clear for everybody, your behavior is more important than the result. If you get result without honor, without respect of the opponent, the rules, the referees. I, I, it was like that, I kick you out of my school. Yeah. They, I was so clear on that, that it never happened. Yeah. Because it, it, it was the deal. Um, the, the athletes, they knew it's a, you, you honor your school and you honor your teacher. Yeah. So if you show disrespect out there, it's like your parents, mm -hmm. they, they will, be pointed yeah i think uh, i think uh, this the teacher this, uh, will be point out no i think i remember that well i uh, the time when i was in the karate school we didn't have that so strong like you are describing and it's it's i think the big difference which makes you forget a certain kind of school or karate school mm. or uh, to always remember what you learned in the taekwondo school mm. i think we we talked about that last time when we were discussing the importance of martial arts for young men mm -hmm. young women and how to also overcome aggression. Mm -hmm. I think that the importance is so so much val more valuable than the thing uh, people think. And uh, I think, like you said, the the values of the honor your teacher honor the gym were so so uh, in that you are like how long how long are you now in in the, in the school? How long is the Taekwondo Schule Basel existing? It's not since yesterday. Twenty nine years now. Twenty nine years. Okay, years. so yeah, a little yeah. bit younger than me, huh? <laughs> still, still. Okay, a question which which comes in my mind is uh, when we talk about the motivation and purpose. Mm -hmm. What could you say for this, for these two words? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I remember it was an um, important moment in my life. Mm -hmm. I, wa I was working uh, at this martial art shop and I was um, counting mm -hmm. box gloves, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, inventor. Huh? Yeah. And I was one, two, three, and suddenly I got one in my hand and I said, what are you doing to your life, man? Is that your life? I'm counting gloves. Is that what you want? I get very upset on me, very angry. <laughs> I get very angry. And then you get more and more clear that... Um, this wasn't your way. That was my way. So the, the, I think once you know your purpose, mm -hmm. and it's dangerous because today with Instagram and social media, everybody think I need a, a deep purpose in my life. Yeah. It's also a dictator. Yeah, yeah. But if you are lucky and you have a purpose or you create a purpose or you feel a purpose, if you have this, this big gift... Motivation is not an issue anymore. Yeah. I never felt, I never felt like I work. Mm -hmm. I I cannot say I go work. Uh, I go I go do what I love to do. Yeah, uh, this is a big gift. I mean, yeah. I remember one of my girlfriends. She told me Nuno is in mission. <laughs> 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 He's again in, in his mission. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit true, but I really take it as a gift. So it makes everything but more simple. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, because you love it so much, you should not forget it's also a job. You yeah. need the discipline, you need to be serious, to be punctual, to make a good reputation mm -hmm. in order to achieve goals and exactly, to have success. Yeah. You cannot just say, I go play around today, 
But in the heart, it was always uh, like... Uh, Your calling in life. Huh? Yeah. And it was uh, not difficult to motivate me. So what, what I find fascinating now that I'm also getting older and I'm helping also young trainers to um, achieve their, their goals and with their businesses, I had the same struggle as you told, not struggle, as the, the same thoughts. I was always my brand. I was always my, my company. Mm -hmm. And I, I did it like from, a, I, 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 I um, felt the calling or the gift. Like I said, hey, I, I wanted to fulfill my mission in life and find my purpose or work with purpose but what i didn't realize back then is also the business side so for example i had clear in my mind my vision my mission all all the marketing tools you need for a brand but for me every year it changed a little bit and that can't actually happen because then your company changes maybe your clients will change so this i had to learn on the mm. hard way you know Not, not in a bad way, I, I developed myself in a good way, I hope. But the thing is, how could you like maintain your core values even when you like change from a warrior or, or from, from a warrior, from a fighter, mm -hmm. from an athlete to a professional? How could you, how could you like have like this red line mm -hmm. and, and continue of doing what you, your core values? Yeah, I think you get me. Mm -hmm. um, I... I would answer how can how is possible to to not have it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what I mean is, if you don't find this, uh, don't feel these core values, mm -hmm. it's difficult to to keep a, di a direction and to keep a motivation. So, I think the I was there because of the core values. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This was already the. The biggest part of, of the deal. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to uh, what I wanted to and, go into. And sometimes I have the feeling this I even did not choose. It was like st stronger than me. Yeah. Yes, it was like st like stronger than me me meant to be. Yeah. Because many times I asked myself, are, are you are you a fanatic? You you do that so many years, like such a motivation. Yeah, yeah I, I know exactly what you mean about and, that. And then uh, I said, yeah, but inside it feels harmonious. Mm -hmm. I'm not forcing myself to something, um, but to your question, to the adaptation, I think the self-honesty to ask yourself all the time, I'm still at the right place? Is this still the right path yeah. for me? Or I'm playing a role? Because if you have success with, with what you do... Mm -hmm. Uh, you're the, definitely uh, playing sometimes a role. And because the, the ego like it. Yeah. And you know the recipe. I put a little bit more salt and pepper. Yeah. I will have more success. Exactly. People, people like it. And suddenly you don't ask you anymore, but I'm doing it. It's still purpose. It's still yeah. deep inside or it's just... Just doing it because of so doing it. Yeah. So this awareness yeah. uh, is important. Yeah. I, I, f I found that uh, fascinating. You have a lot of parallels or maybe I have a lot of parallels to you because in one point... Um, that was 2014, when which I won my my uh, Swiss championships, which I was like I, we we talked about mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. I had a um, an very like a big wave of success because the request came. I was looking good. I was f uh, feeling like in in my humble uh, sport as a warrior. I was a fighter. I was like uh, a monk. You could you could actually say a monk. I wasn't drinking any alcohol, smoking. I wasn't going out any weekends. I was just was training, sleeping, eating. Mm -hmm. And my success, I saw right away, okay, when I do this, when I post these certain uh, pictures, when I write about these certain topics or that or that, people react. And the moment my personality changed in a, in a way which I was like uh, looking for more deep, profound, mm -hmm. uh, meaningful themes in my life i was um i was a little bit scared i was a little bit oh how, how will how will that go, go, uh, go right because um i'm not the, i'm not the same guy anymore you know i'm not the same bodybuilder uh, that, that that's uh, maybe a problem how will i do the the marketing mm -hmm. so then i had to play a role and the more i had to play a role the more i the more i hated the job mm -hmm. because the purpose of mine i i was i wanted to help people I want to share with them what I know, what I feel, what I learn. 
and it was a little bit changing all the time. So for you, I, I think also where the, the more you knew the things you didn't know with 27, like you were a fighter, you were hard, disciplined, the more you opened up, you also became a an father. Maybe maybe you will talk about like how old were your daughter when you were opening your business and that. But the more influences you got, the more the person changes. Sure. And then also the product, the company. Sure. But is is uh, I listen to your question and in a different way. Mm -hmm. It's not the same time. Uh, when I was doing this, there were no Facebook, ah, yeah, of course, yeah. no Instagram. So. But it's very interesting to speak mm. about it because today the society, the social media force you, push you to put yourself in an identity, in a role. Yeah. And as you said, this role can be a prison, can be a oppressing. In my time, no, you are just doing your thing. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the most spectacular thing was the internet site. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember, I remember the, the, the two first Taekwondo school in Switzerland, which made an internet site, it was incredible. Yeah. Even a flyer, we, we did not advertise a lot. Yeah. So you were not there. But inside is, is still also a role, no? So as you said, uh, this is also for me the holistic aspect of life. Mm -hmm. Everything touch everything. Yeah. You cannot separate your love life, your family life, your career, your athlete life. You cannot separate. So getting a father... Uh, you, you change your perspective of life. Um, each each action will have a direct influence on your teaching, because your sensibility will change. Your way of uh, looking to life will change. So, yeah, we spoke about this holistic. This happened. Uh, we call midlife crisis mm -hmm. when I when I got forty. Yeah. And uh, there are two things happened there. Um, midlife crisis. Mm -hmm. And this was funny. I was in a, in a, in a, um, flying to Portugal yeah. to, to, to teach in a seminar. And suddenly a voice came and I knew I'm going to, to invest a lot of time in, in, in Tai Chi and Qigong. Mm -hmm. I will study Chinese medicine. So a new chapter was, yeah. was, was becoming... This came like this, very clear. This is yeah. the way to go. Yeah. For me as well. I'm not 40, but I know exactly what you mean. Funny. It's crazy. And maybe you feel, maybe you are more, more in contact with your inner you, with your inner, I don't know, spirit, soul. But this, this moments I all very carefully listened all the time. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, and, and what also influenced a lot, I, I get sick. I get deeply sick when I was 42. Oh. And um, this was a um, really a nice disease. <laughs> Uh, so I was on the very hard medicaments for one year. So you were or you weren't? Uh, I, I were. Oh. I had to. Oh, shit. So I, I remember good. I said to the doctor, I never took medicaments in my life. I'm not going to start now. Yeah. And what and did then he, 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 he said, said to me, yes, but then you're going to die. Huh? Okay. Then, then, then you I overthink. Said, Give me the name of the medicament, <laughs> please. <laughs> but um, now to, to go back to the entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. my students take, took care of the school one month. And then I was teaching t three hours a day, mm -hmm. four hours a day, sometime more during one year, yeah. taking all the medicaments. And normally I should be in bed yeah. all the day. So why I tell this story, I don't want nobody to cry about it. Uh, the point is, um, believe in your dream. Mm -hmm. uh, I have my own company, my own school, and a lot of freedom and the fun. I have a fantastic life. I, I'm mm -hmm. very uh, happy and thankful for it. But in this case, also, you have to take the responsibility. Even then, in the bad times, you mean? Yeah, then you have yeah. to take the responsibility. And this is the other side of the medal. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You cannot go to um, to take uh, this employee money. Yeah. You you need to, to carry, yeah. to carry on. And that's uh, what many people don't see. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Th this freedom have a price. And yeah. it's good like this because then it smells better. Mm -hmm. If freedom would not have a, a price or a smell, what's the point, no? Yeah, this is the thing. This is a very imp important thing. I think a lot of people also ask me about, ah, oh, so cool, you, you, you do what you love. And so, like in a relationship, you not always are in happy, in love. You know, you have hard mm -hmm. times, good times. You have to go through all of the times. And this is very, very interesting. I didn't know that you were ill. Mm -hmm. How did that? How did you didn't you tell me that? 
I'm healthy now. You, 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 look, you look fitter than everyone I know. So. No, but you know, that <laughs> this is also funny. It depends if you, some people believe in God, some people believe in destiny, yeah. whatever. For me, the, the, um, the sickness was a gift. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my, my daughter, mm -hmm. they always tell me when I overdo, Papa, when are you going to understand you are not action man? <laughs> <laughs> they, they tell me all the time, yeah. no? So the sickness um, show me, showed me that you cannot solve everything with strength and power. Yeah. My, my culture was a culture of a fighter. Yeah. So, so outside it's happening a hurricane. <laughs> Sorry, guys, if you if you listen it. <laughs> so this this fighting culture, mm -hmm. I was doing everything with strength, with discipline, with will, mm -hmm. and suddenly your body shows you, hey man, you have limitations, and then you you need to change your, your thinking, no, mm -hmm. and that's why also I invest so much time uh, now in qigong, in meditation. So you included that since since then. Yeah, the, that. no. Actually, I was I was um, stupid because if you look at martial arts, yeah. uh, it's always the symbol of yin and yang. Yeah, of course. It, yeah. It's it's a, a mix between a soft and hard and fast and slow temper mm -hmm. and control. So for me, the the health today is is a right balance between activity and action, mm -hmm. between um, relaxation and strength. The balance, no? The yeah. balance. And I think uh, till 40, I was balanced there, <laughs> <laughs> just on, on one side. Yeah. Yeah. And perhaps if you are talking about this, um, these difficult moments, no? Mm -hmm. Also a point which um, is interesting to, to think about it now, I had in these years so many financial struggle. Yeah. So many. And ma I I I, I uh, thank you for for speaking about that because a lot of people think it's like no problem everything is easy and then when some maybe a covid uh, corona lockdown situation comes it's like it's like like I can't say that word loud I think <laughs> no but when when something happens they they think <laughs> oh this can't happen this is not normal no no what but all all every year i had some struggle and yeah, i think sure. you will you will agree uh, there are oh, struggles look, there are financial crises uh, look I, w i don't want to make it dramatic yeah. but sometimes i went three times a day at the bancomat mm -hmm. hoping i can find 50 friends <laughs> oh, there shit i mean i mean yeah. it was about eating yeah 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 so but why i speak about that um, it's not about uh, self self compassion it's it never made me doubt yeah uh, I had really no money, but the quality of the life I choose, uh, the quality doing what you love mm -hmm. and sharing with people and seeing people develop themselves and growing, and it was so strong that... You kept going. Yeah, I never regret my choice. Many mm -hmm. times I ask myself, at Puma I had a very good job with, yeah. a, with a good salary. Easy and, you solution. Know, and the, the visit and cart and, yeah, and, yeah. and the title. and the I secure way. I could yeah. grow more there and it was possible. I refused. Mm -hmm. But I never regret this choice. It's unbelievable. And why I say that? Because so many people don't take decisions because of yeah, fear. Exactly. And always this security, security, security. And at the end, um, you're old and you your, never did your, it. Your, yeah, your life is going, yeah. and you you are full of regrets. Yeah, and um, even we think, yeah, it's possible to be very happy with with s small money mm -hmm. if you flow inside, if you feel in harmony with what you are, what mm -hmm. you want, and uh, this is also a side of entrepreneurship. No, not yeah. only. Uh, yeah, I, I, I like I like the aspect you you are mentioning because for me it was always never never really about money. Now it's actually because I'm thinking to build a family, thinking a little bit more advanced. But this comes with the years. But for me it was like 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 for you, um, I had a lot of struggle sometimes. I mean, like when you have um, monthly payments of your clients and one thing happens, for example, 2020. From one day to the other, my clients couldn't pay because uh, yeah, lockdown happened, studios are closed. I, I didn't have till then an online solution. But I was so used to it. I was so used to it to say, okay, here's the money not, not uh, flowing in. So, okay, well, what can I do? I was never really like so nervous. Mm -hmm. To be totally honest, 
a year passed by for uh, almost. Mm. Of course, it's a long, a long break. I talk to my to my brother or to uh, I think I said to Leon, it's like a competition. How long can you hold your breath underwater? <laughs> it seems like that we, because I'm I'm barely like I I'm I'm expecting to be over the lockdown. But the thing is, mm. uh, passion kept me going, and I always were thankful for for what I have which is an amazing opportunity and freedom. It's a luxus. Yeah. Your last podcast, we spoke about determination. And you asked me today also about de determination. So um, when I, it was in the year 2000, so mm -hmm. I started school in 1992. Yeah. And in 2000, I, I did 2001, I decided to, to move to Basel mm -hmm. and to make um, my full job out of it. So uh, I took what I had in the pension cassette because I was doing mm -hmm. myself uh, independent. Yeah. And um, I quit my job. So it was fu full risk. Yeah. And then... All in. All in, all, all, all. And at that time, I remember exactly, I had 70 students. And then I, I knew, okay, to live from the Taekwondo, I need at least 120 students. That was the case. It yeah. was like something like that. Um, and you need to, to, to achieve that, you need to teach every day, every, not, not three times a week, not every day, every day, many hours. Yeah. So I went to the Van der Merven Center, perhaps you know it, and yeah, yeah. Uh, Mr. Van der Merven gave me the opportunity to teach there, and I was renting the, the, the place I'm now here, uh, in uh, Klein Hunigen, to a judo school, but I was renting to them. Mm -hmm. They was uh, paying the full rent, and I was paying for three days a week, two days at Van der Merven. Yeah. Full in, all in, full risk. After two months, the judo school, they say me, we have a nice information for you. Oh, man. We quit, we close. What? Oh, man. We quit, we are not doing well. And, and you tell me that now? Uh, yes. So, or you take the full rent, or it's... Or or for you, it's also closed. <laughs> and this was just the beginning of the activity, no? Oh, shit. And this is, was a case of determination. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm in the fire, but there's no way to go back. Mm -hmm. So let's do it, no? But very interesting, uh, when I took the decision to do it professionally, mm -hmm. I told you about 70 and 120 people. Yeah. For a very long time, I spoke to nobody. I made a deal with myself mm -hmm. because... A little bit like you, um, my school career mm -hmm. was not the, the most brilliant school career uh, you can have. So when I got this very nice job at Puma, mm -hmm. everybody told me, please, don't do, don't do bullshit this time. <laughs> stay there. <laughs> uh, make career there. Finally, you have yeah. something. Stay there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I decided <laughs> to go. go for Taekwondo, uh, I kept it for myself. Yeah. Uh, but I decide inside very clearly. And now to the point, from the moment I decide, students start to come. It's unbelievable, huh? They start to come yeah. without any advertising. Which, which is totally, totally ridiculous because there is a book, The Secret. I read it once when I was 20. And of course, I'm, I don't believe it, but it's sometimes it's like really like what, like the, a rule of the universe, what, what you call out comes back Attra in attraction, attraction law, yeah one. the law of attraction yeah so this is was very funny and also perhaps if young people want to be entrepreneur entrepreneur um nobody told me do it yeah you have to tell yourself even if 100 people tell you do not do it and this was for me spectacular i really because i mean in Taekwondo, I had already a nice career, mm -hmm. a lot of experience. Yeah, a respectable yeah. career. So a lot of experience. So it was actually logic. I, I could have I could have success. But everybody told me, you are crazy. Don't do it. What are you going to do when you are 50? Mm -hmm. And if your body is damaged and you have no security and you have no guarantee, uh, only fear, 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 fear. And, fear yeah. and this was very interesting because... I knew it already before, but I think it's important to prepare young people mm -hmm. which want to take risk in their life or to live their dream mm -hmm. that they know, as Arnold Schwarzenegger said, 
<laughs> Don't listen to the nice <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If they don't have this fear, they will have another. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, yeah. It's, it's totally true. I can I can totally relate to that. I, w I was making fun of, I, I'm, I'm not sure anymore. I'm putting right now a little bit uh, too much uh, well, output there, like like videos every day and there. I am not know, I don't know if it's YouTube or if it's Instagram, but I... I uh, referred to Arnold Schwarzenegger's rules about don't yeah. listen to the naysayers, which is funny because you can sometimes listen to your parents or to your best friends. You have to be very, very, very careful to who you listen to because a lot of people, which it's not even their business, want to tell you how what to do. And sometimes you can you can really listen more to your heart. And I would say if it's something like your core, like your your call in life or your purpose which you're you're looking just risk it i mean we are very fortunate that we are healthy we are in a good place we're in a good country even with their um, <laughs> problems here and there but um i never never regret it when i see now like 12 years or well, how old am i 32 um 14 years later I'm at I'm in a place where I'm at, I'm really happy. I'm sometimes stressed, sometimes very tired, but my my head is spinning with different things instead of what will I do this weekend? Mm, where can I go on holidays? Sometimes I'm thinking, oh holidays, oh when, when was I when was the last time I did? I, I mm -hmm. totally forgot. Mm -hmm. So I, I I have to plan my holidays because yeah. I, I'm all the time driven to do mm. more things, and I wouldn't wouldn't change that for anything in life. On the other side, I have to say, no, you, we are, we are now preaching, preaching mm -hmm. for our church. <laughs> um, uh, it's um, it's a matter of character. Mm -hmm. um, you know this. You, they say in the in the in the sp team sports, mm -hmm. uh, unconscionable player. Mm, yeah, I'm one of them. Yeah, uh, I don't like to take orders. I'm very wild. I'm very rebel. So. Perhaps to be independent, uh, to have my own business. Mm -hmm. Now I paint it nice. Perhaps it was not a choice yeah. because I, I could have all, uh, everywhere troubles yeah. because uh, yeah, I'm not the team player. No? Mm -hmm. So that's one point. And the other point, I feel, I feel safe when I'm in dangerous situation. <laughs> uh, I learned that from the fight. Yeah. It's, uh, it seems a little bit um, paradoxal. No, no, I totally get it. Because but when you know the enemy... You know where where you where you can work. Yeah. When everything is going nice, yeah. you don't know what will happen. Maybe good wrong. Po good yeah. point. And also, I, I like very much the idea from the intuition. No, when mm -hmm. when is when the situation is getting a little bit tough, yeah. you are very awake. Yeah. And you can trust your guts intelligence. Yeah. Your intu yeah guts intelligence. No. But and now I come to the point. Not everybody. S many people they need security. I had a good friend, he, he built his own company mm -hmm. and I met him and he told me, I quit, I, I'm working for somebody again. And I said to him, um, what's wrong, what happened? He said, look, this is not for me, too much pressure, yeah. too much responsibility. Uh, not the money, the he not, or... It's not my she, type. Yeah. Uh, I tried it, now I know I'm not this independent... <sighs> yeah. Uh, lonely fighter. Mm -hmm. like, and I know what you mean. And I know exactly what this you mean. is also courage to yeah. recognize. No, it's, it's not for me. Yeah. Everybody speak about it. It sounds sexy, mm -hmm. but it's not for me. Yeah, I totally, I totally respect that. Mm -hmm. I mean, for example, um, in all fairness, my ex girlfriend, she's a tremendous trainer. She, she got really, I really respect her for that. She got like um, the school done, the academy done. She has her degree. And now she's heading to new um, goals. The time where, when we were together, she was a trainer. And parallel to me, she wanted to, or, or we were, we wanted to uh, build her own business, you know, her own brand and everything. And back then I couldn't understand why she was so struggling with. She was so um, used to a safe and secure job, mm -hmm. end of month, like this, like the working. And I was, since I was 18 years old, totally used to work, 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 work. And for me, it was never work, like you told me. So it's not, never a job. It's just mm. for fun. It's like video gaming. When I'm going home, I'm video gaming with ideas. Oh, what could I do? Oh, what could I do that? And mm -hmm. oh, that's fun. 
Um, when I buy things, I buy it. Oh, how, what could I do for the job? Like, oh, this microphone looks nice. I'm, I'm not buying for fun for like my private life. You have to, um, to give up a lot for that kind of life which I'm having. Which I mean, I mean, you can also relate to. The moment she said, mm, "I won't continue. I might go back to my older job and everything," I was very mad. I was really frustrated. I was like, "Why?" You know why? So much potential, but now it's almost two and a half years later. It's unbelievable how fast time goes by. I totally respect her because she had the guts to give it all up, the job back then. She had a good income, even better than me, because of the you know. Mm. Sometimes it's like here, sometimes like here, mm. and the middle part is here. And for her, it was always here, like every month the same. Um, the, the same well, what's called the same salary yeah. you know I, I don't even know the word <laughs> <laughs> the name salary so the fun the fun thing is she gave it up she tried it she tried it with me and I saw it's it's uh, then I saw for, for the first time what's an entrepreneur um what an entrepreneur looks like not not like my face mm. <laughs> inner values I think uh when you are when you want to be an entrepreneur you have to feel it right away since you're very young i also struggled with the same issues like you you said but i was not fighting i had struggle with uh, like uh, unterordnen it's called mm -hmm. in german uh, like I, I i couldn't i couldn't do stupid things when the boss to, uh, asked me to i was i was thinking it's more more efficient when i do it that way so i had a lot of problems with authority so the, I, I knew it's exactly what you said. It's maybe because you are not a team player that you yeah. had no choice at all yeah, instead yeah. of doing what you yeah. did. For me, it was exactly the same yeah. thing. It's so crazy. Yeah, and as, as you said, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of character and it's not for everybody. For, for me, the, um, this independence was the only choice and it always felt good, uh, even in very hard times. Uh, I never regret the choice, no? Mm -hmm. And what is nice is if you can look back, because now it's many years, and um, I have a lot of feedbacks, no? Mm -hmm. And um, you, you see that um, the school get a very good reputation, mm -hmm. that the parents they which train at that time with me, now they bring their kids. Yeah. So it's like a seed, no? And I come back to the point of purpose, Mm -hmm. You was not just doing a job and getting a salary uh, every month. You you know you you did something which helped people to grow, to develop their character, to develop their health. Uh, uh, Sometimes even values they they give to their kids or they apply in their life. And um, this is a very 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 rewarding, no? And actually, it's, it's beautiful if you can look back and you see. Okay, for that reason. Mm -hmm. I start with that project and it it kept working mm -hmm. and it, it's like like a re realization no? mm -hmm. it's, it's very rewarding you know you spoke before about um, the regrets no there are yeah. a lot of books of the people dying on, on the bed the last last days yeah, no yeah, yeah. and they always say why I haven't tried this why I haven't tried that why I did not love much Hey. Ah, yeah, yeah. I, I should have loved more, should have the risk more. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's bitter. Mm -hmm. It's bitter. It's bitter. And I think why we... No, my culture is martial art. Mm -hmm. When you fight, you are in danger from the first second. Yeah, exactly. Okay? Uh, you have to like risk. Yeah. And my, my, my master always told me, attack. Mm -hmm. Risk will be rewarded. <laughs> Courage will be rewarded. Yeah. You know, like in the movies, no? So I believed in that. But our school system, our edu us education different thing. is always exactly the contrary. Mm -hmm. Be careful. You are going to fail. Be careful what the people are going to think of you. Mm -hmm. Be careful. You are going to blame yourself. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. And then you want people to take risk. Mm -hmm. How come? And nobody say to you, take risk and you will grow with the risk. Perhaps you will fall on your nose, yeah. but you will be stronger. And your eyes will shine because you took the risk. Yeah. And it will give you self-confidence. 
And this, is, I think, is an education mm -hmm. um, problem matter. You yeah, know? That it, that's, that's actually very, very good to explain. Um, the phenomenon with that, uh, with that ed ed education problem, I couldn't say an education problem. There are a lot of problems in our education system. One of them is that we expect it to function even if it's like 100, 200 years old, the system, like with the bell, with the brakes, with the formation, how, how the, the student sits in front of the teacher, the uniforms in some schools. So it's like in a factory. So it's preparing people for mm -hmm. a factory thinking. And we have such an open market now and such a variety of influences in, in Instagram, Facebook, and to, to, to say just that this tool, other ones I don't know yet, yet, we see all the other extremes. People are following the, 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 um, the dreams. People are inventing things. Uh, all of a sudden a new app comes out and the, the guy which invented this a billionaire and we are shocked because we are doing it all right i mean we are uh, writing a good degree in school we are following the teacher's advice why why don't i have a one why don't i have a, a girlfriend why don't i have a happy marriage i did everything right i was always the good guy the the brave student i did every homework and now i'm depressed lonely and maybe single divorced in a little flat because my divorce took a little bit too much. Uh, so you, you know, all the problems. And the crazy thing is, it's just about the self-courage, like you, you told, the self-courage, and also believing in what you want. And what you want is maybe in contradiction with what you are teach to do. Uh, it's, it's very, I think this is a very good point. But it's interesting because we, what, what the topic we are talking today now is mm -hmm. about entrepreneurship, no? But it's the same for an athlete, and I think it's the same for personal life. Mm -hmm. um, nobody, never, never will be in your skin. Yeah. And nobody can see in your heart. So translate in English, it means <laughs> if, if you don't take the responsibility for yourself, if you don't have the courage to listen to your heart and mm -hmm. to your dreams and to your inner voice, nobody will help you and nobody can do it for you. And that's so, so funny, you know, that um, we still rely on the opinion of other people. We rely on the rules. Yeah. And the key is inside. The, the key is inside, no? Mm -hmm. And I think to, yeah, it's important to have this courage, this courage and this trust. Uh, if you want to do in your, in your life your own project, which make you dance inside, no? Mm -hmm. I think it's important, yeah. Let's go back to what we wanted to discuss because we are also uh, philosophizing so much. As usual. If you like it, please stay tuned. We will no, <laughs> never surrender. We will do every Friday. <laughs> but uh, let's go back to the first years in Basel. You, thought, you, you talked about that, a little bit of struggle, the uncertainty and everything. But um, there, are, there are things like unis, Unisports, Migros Club Schule, that and that and that. Can you tell us a, bit, a little yeah. bit more about that? Uh, it is interesting because this also touched a little bit the, the marketing aspect. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to, to grow fast in mm -hmm. order to exist. Yeah. So that my logic was uh, I have to multiply Taekwondo ever I can. No? Mm -hmm. So we opened a section with Roche Sport Club in mm -hmm. my school two times a week. Um, I went to the university. I teach to, in the University of Basel for 15 years every Monday. Um, I had a partner at partnership with um, Micro Club Schule. Then uh, we did a lot of exhibition, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of, of self-defense seminars. So you were school. omnipresent everywhere, huh? Uh, Fabrizio, so some, some days I was teaching seven hours a day. M my normal pensum of teaching with movement yeah. was like 25 hours <laughs> a week. And that time uh, I was not talking. When you were a crazy guy. Yeah, everything yeah. I was explaining, I was doing. Yeah. Oh my God. So... This is some, and then people, wow, the school is big and nice, but the, the work behind they never was, saw it. was just crazy, crazy. I, yeah. I did that for many, many, many years. And what is interesting, um, I always try to analyze, to understand, okay, what makes the school grow? Why these people choose our school, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And then you do some um, marketing actions. 
And now, uh, long term, I have to say, I, I don't know. And I never realized exactly why people came and not. But what I know is the long term effects. You told me one time you have to stay relevant, to stay present, to being always there and doing always some action, something, but never stopping doing mm -hmm. something and in a lot of variety, mm -hmm. dif different actions. Suddenly you get a phone. You remember two years ago, you made an exhibition there. Two years ago? Yes, I like it. Unbelievable. Yeah. I want to join your school. Remember my son or the son of this son? So it's very interesting because endurance, endurance is rewarded. Yeah. To be always active, creative, innovative in the long term, it's like um, a very strong foundation. Mm -hmm. Very strong foundation, yeah. You mentioned that. That's it's actually called uh, planting seeds. Planting seeds. I had, an, I had this uh, same experience with a colleague of mine. Um, he wanted to work with me this last year. Unbelievable. We're still, uh, we, we are in a new year. It's not 2020. <laughs> where was the, where, where, where went the uh, year by? It was Corona Land. Corona Land. <laughs> so uh, my colleague wanted to work with me and he asked me how I do my, my uh, marketing. And I, and I said to him, honestly, I never did it. You know, I never, well, okay. To be honest, sometimes I paid like for ads, like for Instagram, yeah. but just to like yeah. do it once and say, uh, see how it goes. But I just put input out. No, no, I put output or uh, whatever. <laughs> I put some, <laughs> some posts out. And the thing is, I always concentrated on be always omnipresent, like writing yeah. with people when they have yeah. questions or helping and that exactly. and that. And the cool thing, years after that, people remember you and come yeah. to you and say, hey, are you still coaching? Are you? Same, yes, strategy. same yeah. strategy. But you know, same time, if you go back to the, to the start of our discussion, mm -hmm. if it's like a mission or calling or it's, it's in harmony with what you are, mm -hmm. this just happens. You don't have to do nothing. You just have to stay honest in your way. And because following this way, naturally, you will be present. You will have energy. You will not answer to somebody mm -hmm. because it's your job. It's because you feel responsible. This person asks you a question. You want to do your job because you like it. You will answer this question from the heart with interest, with dedication, because you are just at the right place. And it, it just happened. It's not that you think, okay, if I do that this will happen. If I do that, this will be the rewarding. You are just flowing at the right time, at the right place, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The word is the flow. The word is the flow. The magic word. How could you uh, subscribe? Well, guys, don't forget to subscribe anyway. I wanted to <laughs> here. Don't forget to subscribe. We will have every week new, new, po new um, podcasts and also follow along videos which is uh, making a wave is the follow along videos with coach Laurie and coach lady. Unbelievable. I won't train with you guys, but if you do, they are very tough. So do them. It's really valuable training. So again, how would you uh, describe success and quality of life? Mm, I like that. I like that question. Um, it's very relative. It depends a lot of, of the perspective, no? Mm -hmm. I, as I told you, um, if I look the last uh, 30 years, I, I, I did not achieve to, to be rich with Taekwondo, no? But um, one of my masters of Tai Chi from Master Pang from Taiwan, uh, he told me one time that the definition I like very much, he said, what makes you rich is how many hearts people you touch in your life. Yeah. That's m make you rich, no? And I, I, I share that opinion. I met so many people. I ca could have intensive moments of sharing, of teaching, of learning from them, mm -hmm. also enjoying their trust, uh, enjoying their loyalty, enjoying the passion. Uh, this makes you very rich from inside. So I think I knew it before I started. And that's why I choose that path um, because it's in harmony with your heart, with your what you are. Mm -hmm. I know I'm boring. I repeat always the same, but actually it's a little bit, it's a bit the core. So for me, this is success to touch people, to share with people. Um, enough, yeah. enough, enough.
I, I don't think you, you repeat it because um, deep in us, I think we know already what's good and what's bad, what's correct and what's what's uh, incorrect. But we we don't really listen to it. I mean, for example, what you said about listen to your heart. You could find 100 or even more books about that, how you can listen more to your mm. heart, what happened when this person listened to their heart and that and that, but why we don't do it. And I think this is the, the most difficult question to answer. One, I think not everyone can, and this is totally on. This is totally honest and it's okay. There are a lot of people which I also know, they are very head-focused and they have to sometimes train themselves to listen a little bit more to the gut feeling, but they won't really like be like me or you or just be very spontane or uh, risk taking or whatever. But what I can offer every one of you guys to to understand is there has to be a certain time in your life when you want to do your business, you open up your business, your school or your coaching career or whatever, your even online career that you have to ask yourself. And this question was not written down, so bear with me. Are you uh, able to work with other people? Are you able to put work out that people can work with it? You understand me? Mm -hmm. So is your idea any good? But also is your character any good? Or are you maybe a clown? Or are you maybe a not stupid person, but limited in your wisdom or your knowledge? You, you know, so yourself have to reflect uh, uh, what's lacking. Am I exaggerating in one part or am I lacking in one part? And if so, can I work so I can be more skillful or more knowledgeable in one area? And this was a an, an tough part for me because you, you don't have an assistant, you don't have a critic or a teacher. You're doing everything on your own. You're learning everything while you're doing it. No one is critiquing you, criticizing you in a, in a right way. You know? How did you, how did you accomplish that for like... Having this this view is oh no no now it's time to do that. Was it always the gut feeling or the gut feeling? And sometimes sometimes I was a little bit smart, <laughs> or sometimes or life teach me. I mean, I like very much the point you you point out is mm -hmm. learning by doing. Uh, you do experience, you do mistakes, and then suddenly the people disappear, don't come any, any, yeah. anymore, or you hear something behind here. Oh this. This happened, and then you know, okay, perhaps I overreact, perhaps this was wrong. But what I like, you know, in, the, in this um, process, this process leads you to full 100% self-responsibility. Mm -hmm. You will make a lot of mistakes. And again, we call it mistakes. Why we don't call it experience? And adjusting this experience, mm -hmm. you adjust your character, you adjust your um, behavior and you grow. Mm -hmm. And let's let's start from the contrary. W would it be possible to do no mistake? No. So let's do them and adapt yeah. and, and grow. I think is really not is not a problem, especially because it shapes you. Yeah. It sha if it doesn't break you, it shapes you. No. <laughs> That's a good saying. And you spoke about all the people giving advice. It's always nice to, important, not nice, it's important to listen to advice and to, to learn from everybody. But as I say, at the end, you are in your skin and you will alone take the responsibility for your behavior. So just understand this very simple fact that it's a part of the process. You are, you are teaching, no? you are sharing with people. But also you are in a in a in a process. I like to say that my students are my teachers. Yeah, totally agree with that. M my students are my teacher, and we have a, a relationship. Mm -hmm. And it's not always clear who is doing what. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's an interaction, and uh, I like very much this process of making mistakes, learning from it, mm -hmm. adjusting because at the end you are shaping yourself. Exactly. Now I see that. Totally the, the same direction. I did a lot of mistakes, and with the, with time, my clients, my non, I, I'm not fortunate enough to have students. A few I have, but they teach me also to be a better teacher, to be a better person. 
we were at, we were at one point and i want to go deeper into that uh, subject is how you deal with hard times and disappointments mm. and is it or is it not uh, just part of the deal sure it's a part of the deal and you know we we are so talented to put the focus on the negativity. Mm -hmm. um, it's like a, a national sport <laughs> uh, to put the focus on the negativity. So if you just step back and you look at the big picture, uh, now in, in very specifically in my case, I don't know how many thousands of students w we had. And um, I think like something like 300, 300 black belt was formed in my school mm -hmm. and the majority of them are still very good friends and we are so happy when we meet and we are still in touch and then i had some case three i guess of disappointment mm -hmm. and it was hard and uh, you feel a bad feeling and sadness whatever but then you step back and you look at the big picture yeah and you have to be able to put it in perspective. And I think all life is like that, no? Um, with disappointment, you, it depends where you, where you look, where you put the focus, mm -hmm. and are you able to be thankful instead of going on the victim, in the victim role, no? Yeah. And as I said, no, um, when you do so much, you work so much, and you, you, you are with so much people in contact, so much people, it, it would be very naive to expect that everything will flow yeah 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 i mean for example uh yesterday i was passing by a new uh, barber shop and uh, i thought maybe okay i will count the steps so i went from this corner to the left and like 200 steps um going going oh my god my english ah okay <laughs> to the left 200 steps later there were another barber shop and so I said, okay, this is very, very risky if you think that you will open up a new business with the same idea that the guy have a hat in the same area, the, right around the corner. But you have to have something special, you know. You have to, you have to believe in in that. And which, which I find funny because there is a lot of competition. You can't really think, oh, you will invent the light bulb. Your invention is unique. You, it will have uh, just success because you invented it. It's so much struggle to to sell, to market your product, to even do the accounting, which I hated to do. And unfortunately, my ex-girlfriend was my accountant. So now I have to learn it in the hard way. <laughs> Thank you, Yeno, for doing my accounting anyway. <laughs> so, but I totally understand it. And yeah, it's a part of the deal. I, I was sometimes the victim but what I learned, I was always the, the um, perpetrator, mm -hmm. causing, causing these problems. Yeah, and, and this is this is important to to realize. You no, know, when you are so 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 committed as you mm -hmm. are or as I am, somewhere without realizing, you are a bulldozer. Mm -hmm. You you are a bulldozer because you your ideas are so clear. You know so good what you want. And sometimes you shock people or you are just too much for people because your commitment is so strong. Mm -hmm. And to recognize um, that you always was a part of the problem, mm -hmm. we always need two person to argue. And also to realize a lot of time it was just about your interests, about your ego, and to make peace with it. That some sometimes it clash, but it's just, it's okay. Mm. It's okay. So for for me, uh, if I make the the contability <laughs> yeah. uh, of all all the, all these years, I can be only thankful, and uh, I'm sorry for the people I hurt or I regret it very much. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, life continues. Yeah, that's a that's a good point because I never was the hero in the story. I always tell told my clients uh, from the beginning on, it's actually not my story; it's your story. I'm just a side note. You have to write your own story. I, I, I won't be the hero. I won't be the role model. I can be an influence. I can be an inspiration. But people got... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm also sorry for, for people who got really hurt which my, with my character because they hoped more from me than I gave. Mm -hmm. But I'm just giving that which is like I, uh, like a mountain, a fountain, like a fountain. I, I, can't, I can't really 
see where I'm putting my energy, my time and also my ideas to. And yeah, it flows. And when it maybe doesn't flow, it's not on purpose. And this I had to learn also to to recognize my character. Mm-hmm. You know, this is also like mind blowing. We are at the at the subject, the second last one before we talk about legacy, which is unbelievable. In the last year, it came for the first time in my life. What's my legacy? Mm-hmm. But we have one subject before that: team and family spirit. Yes. Um, I I think when we we have a school or. Mm-hmm. You can apply it to everything, actually, to a company, to a school. Yeah, to I a, think that to, way also. To, to a fitness. Um, people want to connect with people they trust and they feel good. Mm-hmm. And the emotional part I- is very important. Let's say you you are very good. Um, your technique is very good. You have a good specialist in, in your field. Mm-hmm. But you don't bring uh, human qualities Totally disaster. And the yeah. people don't feel good at your place. You yeah. are not able to connect them. You are not able to give them a common sense, mm-hmm. not a common sense, a common goal, yeah. a common vision, mm-hmm. a common culture. If this is not there, you will nev- not have success, no? Mm-hmm. And the other side, I think what is also beautiful is when people feel that, they come to a place to recharge energy, to meet people they feel connected with. Yeah. And um, so it's w- always what I try to to commit the people to our values, to be a family, to stick together, to help each other, mm-hmm. to feel together, because I think this is very, very important, especially uh, our day, our society is very individualist society, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we need that very strongly our day. Yeah. And it makes a difference for a business for sure. For yeah. sure, for no, sure. I, tot- I totally agree. I, now I get what you meant with the subject because for me it was like uh, you you wanted to talk about your family also s- as a spirit. But I totally get it because my company or, well, I can't say my company, uh, was always about people. So it would be like really ridiculous if I wouldn't take care of people or would love people. I, I really love people. I really love meeting new people, talking with them, helping to, su- uh, to succeed. Uh, you see the hurricane. Always when I talk, when you talk, it's all best weather. You get you get the sunshine, guys. Look at that. Now it's sh- uh, sun not shining, <laughs> but as soon as he talks, sun is shining, and I have to have to adapt the ISO here in the camera <laughs> to not like be white. All right, but anyway, I totally get it, and it's fascinating when when I um, when I um, oh man, I'm tired. <laughs> when. <laughs> We are comparing. Br- we, we, are break, comparing. we are breaking a record, you know. <laughs> no, no, one hour. We still have ten minutes. <laughs> when I comparing me to my to, to other coaches, which I always always did and always do, I can't stop. I always was comparing. Okay, well, what's what's a unique selling point? You know, what's a unique selling point? There are a lot, but one selling point is I just love people. I just love to work with people, and not always, to be totally honest, I could. Train. I I remember when you said uh, seven trainings. My record is in ten trainings. Wow! But not not for more than two three months. I <sighs> ten trainings after another. I I drank shakes because I couldn't yeah. have, to have time to eat. Uh, uh, ate bars like protein bars, and but it was crazy. But I I didn't felt this tiredness like after one hour of accounting, which is oh felt like an, a year but it was it was crazy always loved what i did and people came back because it felt like a community mm. it felt like our oh, family mm. and i was were very thankful for that so for me core value for my business with people always well not that not having in mind that's my brother you know like mm-hmm. or mm. my sister but i was always taking care of that they have the best time in their lives mm. can i say that i can sure, say that sure we are the se- with uh, the last subject. I let you speak first because you are older than me, and you are more exper- You have more experience with the word leg- legacy. Yeah, you know, legacy could be a little bit arrogant. Mm-hmm. Uh, could be the the way I, I say it. Uh, I, I got I learned taekwondo. Um, what we call from a very direct line. Mm-hmm. It's like from a family. 
Uh, I told you that in another postcard, I think I had the, 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 the luck to meet my Taekwondo Ur Grossvater. Mm -hmm. So um, I met three generations of masters. Unbelievable, yeah. And um, I was connected with them many years. Still, uh, I'm still connected naturally. And it touched me very much this idea that uh, all their life they teach and then they give to a student and all his life he teach. And now is my turn. And um, it's a responsibility. And I always said, what I, my Taekwondo is not mine. I'm mm -hmm. just tra transporting it. And I try to give it so good as possible to the next generation. No? Mm -hmm. So somehow, if um, the school I'm leading now wouldn't continue, for me, it would be very sad. Um, it's not important in which form it can be a school it can be teaching whatever but i would be very happy that uh, our students carry um the taekwondo the, the spirit the lives values, on yeah. the, sp the spirit lives on mm -hmm. i think yeah, this i know is what you mean also um what is interesting for for our ego if it, if it doesn't happen perhaps it means i hold it too strong yeah i i made it my own story yeah and Actually, it's not there to, for me. It's there to share, yeah. to, to, to be shared, and to, to grow and to develop new potential with their creativity, with their new idea of a new generation. Mm -hmm. And um, in accordance also with the time, because time has influence on everything. No? So this is really a, a wish I have inside that uh, in 30 years, I can sit down and look at them the way they do it and just uh, say, good job, you do, mm -hmm. you do it very well and uh, to enjoy that, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I totally, I'm, I'm totally fascinated by what you said. And also this topic of legacy, I found it, find it, I find it very, very inspiring. Um, for me, legacy is actually the same thing. I mean, I, I just wanted to take a, take a seat back and watch what will happen with that what i found it with uh, with the idea which i had and it's nothing new but maybe i can change a little few things there and here here and there and it will become something unique mm -hmm. and first totally honest it was about me i wanted to be schwarzenegger even even bigger when i started i wanted to that everyone knows my name but in the end i was like i i didn't get i didn't became schwarzenegger maybe if i would i would still continue to be uh, driven like that no but the thing is i loved more the opportunities which i had when i just were when i was in when when i am financially free when i i'm free to to do my things and everything and so to be known, to be a celebrity or to be recognized for what I do was, was more and more not so, not so special for me. But what was special was, and this is so fascinating, I, I think I was like, I think 27, 28, the first time I, I realized that when people came to me and remembered what I told them, and it was totally spontaneously, they had some issue with the girlfriend and I said to them, hey man, no girl will like you if you are like crying about it. Forget her, be the, the, the boss of your own life and the girl will come back. And I just said it because I wanted to continue with the training. And then one year later he came and said, hey, you, you know, unbelievable, one year passed and he, she, came, he, she came back and uh, we, we talked. But you know, I don't want to be with her because you were right. It was, it was the wrong girl. So I said, wow, so cool. Not that I invented that, not that I'm a psychologist, because I just had the chance to influence someone's life. Mm. And in this in this format as a coach, maybe, and no, not maybe, of sure, of course, I will write down a lot of my my um, my uh, experience mm -hmm. for next generation of coaches. Mm -hmm. This is actually my legacy. I want to help as many coaches as I can to be better coaches, more fulfilled coaches. And my wish will be when I will get, go, um, I don't know, let's say, I'm, I, I don't have a so long lifespan as you, I am like a hamster. Bodybuilders don't live long. L let's see, in 30 years, in 30 years I come back and no one recognizes me anyway, anymore. Everyone is, is uh, wearing maybe the shirt, JFP or another brand. 
but they don't even know that I was the founder. That would be cool. <laughs> but it's, it's still going on. Spirit is still living or even developing itself. That's a vision. <laughs> for, for, for me, the important point, like I see, is sharing and responsibility. Mm -hmm. That's important. Sh yeah. Sharing and responsibility. Yeah, yeah and it's a good, good, uh, good word to end this. Yeah. Guys, thank you very much for joining. We had a blast to talk about that. I mean, we, we are obviously talking more and more about that issues and the philosophy and also business uh, uh, entrepreneurship. But today we were doing it for you to listen to us. And um, I, hope you I hope you join next week's episode. We will see if we can give you a little glimpse of what, will, what it will be about. But till then... Nuno, you have the words, you have the last words to say in the camera. Yeah, I will do some advertising. Um, Fabrizio spoke about listening the heart. And he said sometimes we cannot always, because we are um, very controlled by our mind, by our thoughts, very rational. So next week I will teach meditation every morning from 7 to 8 in the morning, one hour. And there's a very direct um, connection there. In meditation we learn to calm down the monkey mind, uh, this rational thinking, which is always judging, analyzing, uh, counting, and is really an inside terrorist. <laughs> and if we can calm this um, rational mind, we get much more in contact with our heart, our intu intuition, our soul. Um, this is a bit the romantic aspect. It's also a very practical aspect, better sleep, more calm, better recovery. So if you are interested, please contact me. Uh, if you are uh, motivated enough to stand up very early next week from 7 to 8, I will be your man. Perfect. So how to contact him, you will uh, see in the, in the description of this video. You right away have then the contact infos for him and he will provide you the Zoom link and every other detail. So join it. I won't. To be totally honest, I'm then at this time with my dog and teaching her how to behave. But right now <laughs> she's behaving. Guys, just feel powerful for another week, for another new year. And um, let's stay that way. Let's stay powerful. We get this. We got it. Just feel